Your system may not be the best looking system. <laughs> it's, it's definitely not the not expensive. <laughs> yeah, not, not the most expensive. And, you know, there are guys out there with a much nicer looking setup. You don't even see the speakers, but yours might sound better. Oh, uh, 100%. <laughs> Guarantee it. <laughs> I already know what's coming. I already know what's coming. I can't wait. I can't wait. Here I am with Mr. Uh, Move. Show and Tell, Move. and we're moving around, around the room. This is the infamous setup from the picture that everybody is clowning me on. Uh, there's my speaker stand that goes up. Oh, somebody thought that these speaker stands that hold the Atmos speakers up here were actually holding the TV. <laughs> All right, because they saw, they saw mm -hmm. that guy there, and then saw this one here, and this old clip speaker was just hanging out. Yeah. Since that picture, I've moved the center channel this way. We've got the uh, left speaker two feet out from the center channel on this side, and then the right speaker is two feet out from there. Nice wide soundstage, as wide as can be. The uh, sweet spot is the bed there. All right, so I'm, I'm at this guy's place, and I'm about to demo his, uh, his interesting setup here. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it sounds. So I'm in the sweet spot right now. All right, here we go. I know what this is supposed to sound like. Here we go. All right, so that, that was that was okay. I think we could do a little bit better. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So initial impressions. I think. I mean, it's it is immersive. Whoa, it is immersive. Well, we'll calibrate it and see before and after. You have any other like demos? You have anything like that's kind of maybe musical, so we can hear how it sounds before and after. All right. So I got to demo some music tracks that I actually know. So. All right. So so far, I mean, one thing I can say is. The imaging is better than I expected because in the pictures it looks like it's very narrow. Yeah. But it's actually like I'm getting good left and right and good center imaging. Yeah. Um, you know, the place is a, a little bit reverberant, which you can kind of tell. But that's just the room. You know, unless you put up treatments, that's how it's going to be. But um, one thing I think we can definitely fix is the bass sounds a little bit bloated just because I'm up against this wall. Yeah. So I'm right here. It's getting, you know, the, the waves are stacking up. So... Maybe we can do something to make the bass a little tighter sounding. All right, so these speakers are way too good for the price that you got them for. <laughs> these are, I mean, right now they don't have any equalization. They're just pretty much out of the box. You just level match them, right? Yeah. These are just too, I mean, they're amazing. These subs, I think what we can do is extend the bass out a little bit more because what I'm noticing is I measure these subs and I know they can go lower than what I'm hearing them oh. sound like in the room. Unless I'm sitting in a null, which... Possibly. Not... I mean, I get more bass over here. Than okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible that I'm sitting in a null, but... Okay, so I think I have an idea of what we're going to do. I think what Magic Beans will probably do is maybe tame the high frequencies slightly and maybe fill in the... A um, little bit of the mid-range. Okay. It's going to fill in slightly and hopefully smooth out some of that bass and make it a little bit tighter. So, we'll see. There we go. All right, so what are we going to do okay. here, Joe? So... 
I am going to run Magic Beans, the new app that I am uh, coming out with very shortly. So let's see, I have a choice here. So I can, I can run it here uh -huh. on the iPad Ooh. or on the MacBook. Hmm. I don't have a PC right now, but it would work on there also. So I think what I'll do just for simplicity, I'll do it on the mobile device just so I can move around. Okay. Right? Move around the room. Okay. I have my U mic one here. So first thing we gotta do is do the mic check. Mic check. What I do is I blow into the mic, make sure it's not coming from that mic over here. Okay, so it's coming from the correct mic. Uh, and then we have simple RTA if all you wanna do is kinda get an idea of what your system sounds like. But I'm gonna do true target. So here it goes, I'm signed in. This is gonna have instructions on how to measure. And then you can choose from preset layouts or what I'm gonna do right now is do a custom one just because and then, so what do you have? Center, you have fronts, mm -hmm. and you have side surrounds and yep. LFE. Yep, and then front heights. And oh, look, it says front height, middle height, rear height. Look so front that. heights. Uh huh. And then, so if you have up firing, this does a slightly different EQ, but okay. you don't, so we'll uncheck that. Okay. So then you got if you center height and top surround. Is that for Oral yeah, 3D? Oh, oral, man. We got you, too. Every, we got you. So down here, it shows you how much complete. We're about 15% of the way there. Uh, calibration profile. I already have a calibration profile loaded. So... Here we have, it's asking for a near field measurement and I can choose to have it wait for five seconds before it starts, but it's a 10 second measurement. And uh, it shows you here the average and the real time response. So we're gonna play pink noise from our spatial audio calibration toolkit. Oh dude. Yeah, it's actually in the Blu-ray player already. All right, so we've got this fired up. First thing we need to make sure that all of the speakers are set to large because we do wanna calibrate the full range signal of them. So set them all to large. Um, and then in audio, Odyssey's turned off because you didn't do that I didn't yet. run Odyssey because okay. I just, yeah. Perfect. So now we need to go down to this section here. Impulse response, sweep test, and periodic peak noise are for the professional calibration tools. If you are wondering why there is a section in the spatial audio calibration toolkit for advanced use, this is why we put it in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the baffle width here and I wanna measure near field about the same distance as the baffle to begin with. Okay. Right, so this is a near field response. If you have the room and you're not close to any nearby surfaces, you can do two times the distance to kind of account for the baffle step. But for right now, because you have some stuff close, we wanna get as close as possible to this. Okay. And you just got the U mic on a little stick there, right? Yep. So this is a selfie stick <laughs> it's, tripod. It's, it's a it's a, is this like hot dog on a stick? I would really recommend this for people just because with this setup, you're gonna probably want something to hold the mic, but you can just set it down or hold it and it's lightweight. Yeah, I'll um, put links in the description if you guys wanna check out those little, like the little shock mount and all that kind of the stuff. The shock mount is handy because it doesn't, it doesn't capture the handling noise. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we're gonna go to pre out ping noise. We're gonna do front left, mm -hmm. which is here on this toolkit, right? Yeah, so you just you go ahead and the... let that play and put it at a decent volume. Decent volume. Yeah, just a, a volume so it's not uh, it's overcoming the background noise. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna hit measure. Oh. All right, so there's a near field measurement of the so speaker. So green means it's done. Green done. means you're good? Yeah, this is handy because if you're far away from the speaker or the computer, Hold you can on. easily look over and see that it's done. Okay. Right? Oh, right, 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 yeah. right, right. So if you need to redo the measurement, you can do that also. Next, it's asking for the center channel. Okay. And you notice I'm kind of scanning in an end pattern. Just okay. scanning the this whole motion front. that you're doing? Yeah. Oh, green. Okay, and you see in the center, there's a dip in the response. That's kind of normal for a center channel. Next, it's asking for the front right. Okay, let me get to front right. Again, you guys, this is the periodic pink noise section of the toolkit. This is for the advanced section. Here we go. Okay. On this speaker here, mm -hmm. you were doing this thing. You were going like, bruh, 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 bruh. yeah, that, that. Why are you doing that? So and what does that do? So this is using the moving mic method and I'm scanning the front of this to get a spatial average. Normally when you measure a speaker, it's a sweep whoop. And yep. that's at a single point. 
And what we're doing is we're capturing the entire sound of the front of the speaker. All okay. the sound that's coming out of the front, we want to see how that's reacting. Okay. Yeah. So what's interesting here is that I can't really scan the entire speaker because it's behind this, but that's the natural place where this thing actually is. So, so maybe just move the Apple TV and the Roku box. And so the reason why it's important to do it in situ, meaning where the speaker is and in the room, is because an anechoic response of the speaker doesn't really make sense because this is not close to that. Look at where this is. So it's not ideal, but that's where it is. And yep. uh, yeah, right uh, it's around right. There we go. Okay. You got the green on there? Green, and then now it is asking for surround left. Okay. Which is over here by the door. Okay, surround left. Here we go. All right. Boom, we got green. Okay. So the process is pretty quick. I remember the first time we did Magic Beans, and it took Joe remotely six hours to do it. Yeah. So that's the revolutionary part about this app is, well, one of the revolutionary things, uh, it'll do it in 20 minutes, which yeah. is huge on the time saving. Well, right? it'll allow you to do it in 20 minutes. That's so right, you. You don't have to call me and pay me to do a remote calibration. You can do it yourself. So we've worked hard to make this as easy as possible to do yourself. Front, height, left. And we made sure to match up the name so you can look at the toolkit and it matches the same terminology. Front, same height, terminology from the toolkit to the app. That's right, that's how we do it, people. All right, here we go. Oh, this is a tricky one, huh, Joe? Yeah, so this is a concentric driver, here we go. Yep. All right. Yeah, look at that, see? That's why we like these. Look at how, it's pretty flat. Okay, so let's just say, oh shoot, I forgot to, forgot to measure. I can hit redo measurement, so I don't have to go and redo the whole thing again. So okay. I'm gonna go to redo. I'm going to hit this wait five seconds if you want to see what that does. And that's if I have to go press play on the computer and if it's far away, it'll give me five seconds to get in my place. So okay, here we go. hit it. So if I press that, five, four, three, two, one. So go ahead and play the pink noise. All right. So this one measures nearly identically. Yep. So this is the second stage and what it's asking for now is to take a uh, microphone measurement from your main listening position, MLP, main listening position. Okay. All right, so right now it's asking for the main listening position measurement, and most automatic calibrations do something like this, where you set the mic down, it takes various measurements. They're actually sweeps, so you are required to move it to different locations while it does sweeps of every single speaker. That takes quite a while. So we're still doing a moving mic measurement here from the main listening position, and in this 10 seconds, we're maybe measuring 40 samples, so it's equivalent to moving it to you know, a Multiple bunch of different areas. Yeah, so we're getting actually a better, more accurate measurement of the space here. So okay. what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna point it towards the speaker that it's asking to play, so we're asking for front left, so I'm pointing it slightly towards that speaker. Slightly toward that speaker. Yeah. Can we Can we go, okay. So, so instead you're gonna... of straight ahead, I'm okay. pointing the mic right, cool. kind of towards the speaker. Toward the speaker, because so. that's you're gonna get the highest amount of SPL from pointing it at the speaker, Exactly. Correct? Okay. All right. So what you'll notice is I was moving in a circular motion and basically I'm trying to cover where your ears would be. So you're not always sitting in the same place. Maybe you're moving forward oh, or backwards. Oh, and if you have like a home theater with home theater chairs and you're reclining and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you want to kind of cover that spatial area. And what you'll notice is what I was talking about earlier. This has a lot of extra base here, right? More than the initial measurement. It's probably because we're here, you know, in that one spot. But also, yeah. I see a dip in the response, but we'll see. We'll see after all this. Okay. Let's do uh, center. Okay. Green, green. Okay. Uh, right. Front, right. Okay. So surround right is that one? Okay. That guy over there. So you're pointing. The mic in the direction of the surround right. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay. Oh, you're just, you're just turning it. That's oh, right. see, that's, that's a good way to get that little hot dog on a stick there, there going go. there. Okay. 
Okay. okay. Uh, plane front height left. Front height right. Yeah. All right, now the big boy one, LFE. Oh, the LFE. That's serious. So wait a second, time out. You're okay. telling me that the LFE, we only take one measurement. We don't do a near field. We Correct. just do it at, okay, all right. Correct, because the LFE, it doesn't really matter what the sub is doing near field. It's always interacting with the room, so we need to equalize it as such. So there's so no such it, thing as sub by itself. It's okay. sub plus room all the time. Sub plus room all the time. Okay, so we can just go to LFE. Yeah, so when you're doing this, make sure that your subs are activated if they're uh, using that auto sensing. So you may have to play the, the sound for a little while, wait a few seconds, and once you hear them all on, then you can do it. Here we go. So now it's uh, doing the filters. That's all it did. So it says, do you want to save this measurement? I'll say yes. Say, Jana's room. Save. So it gave us a target curve specific to this room and based on these speakers. And now I can go in here and choose the export 10 band EQ, you know, various things, Dirac Live, you can set it. There's a lot of different options here, which I can explain later on. But what we want, so REW, what we want is actually we're going to be using multi QX, and so we can export to that. All right, so the importance of this is this is not your generic Harman target curve or a downward slope. This is specific to this room, and I can actually download this and share this with other people. Um, the other thing that is special about this is that we have an RTA for alignment. So we're gonna plug in the filters that it recommends, just import them, but we're also gonna see if the system is doing what we expect it to do. So we actually do a post measurement and see if it aligns with our target curve. No other calibration system does that. They just assume this is what it's supposed to sound like. Fingers crossed that it actually does. Right. We're gonna check to see if it's doing what it's supposed right. to do. And I think uh, one of the things that you know can be glossed over is that the Harman target curve was based on what now? Uh, the JBL M2 in the rooms that they tested it in. So it's an average of those different rooms. But unless you have a JBL M2, and if you have one of those rooms, yeah, you can use the Harman target. But if you don't, I think it's a good starting point if you were to just kind of guess. You know, it kind of looks like a Harman target, but it's not exactly, mm -mm. right? No. Nope. So, so that's the importance, ladies and gentlemen. It makes a custom target curve for your specific room with the capabilities, knowing the capabilities of your speakers. There's nothing else that does that. And that's why I already know it's gonna sound a hundred times better. So I, I'm excited to see or hear what this is gonna sound like. I can't wait. So right now we are using Odyssey Multi QX to send all the custom target curves. And so I've already sent the target curves from my phone to the computer. So if you have Dropbox, something like that, you can do it that way or email to yourself, AirDrop, any way that you can get the files to your computer. Now this, this software is only on PC, correct? This is only on PC, and this is with Denon and Marantz products, but if you have Dirac, we have custom target curves for Dirac and other, uh, basically anything. So right now, um, I've loaded the files onto here. One thing that you'll notice is there's a file called uh, REW, and basically we've made it so that you can import the measurements if you have the pro version. So we're gonna have two different versions. The pro version will have some ridiculous amount of channels that you can calibrate and um, an ability to import into REW so you can go in there and do some manual manual tweaking. So we'll show that right now. That As it, you can see, it says Chana's room, center MLP, center near field, center room curve. Look at all that. So I can just go and take the text file, drag and drop into here, and now you have the measurement and you're able to take a measurement wirelessly you know, if you have it connected to a mobile device, and boom, you have the measurement here in REW as well. But what we are here to do is we are here to import this stuff into Multi QX. Okay. So let's go ahead. Now you go. do have to buy Multi QX, mm -hmm. right? It's two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. right? And you can see I have the Denon sixty-seven hundred H here. So what we want to do is we actually want to do a quick calibration. All right. So right now I am going to just do a basic Odyssey calibration using the Odyssey mic here. 
We're not gonna really use most of that stuff except for levels and delay. Okay, so here's what we got. All right, so you have two subs here. Oh, there yeah. we go. So I had to wake up a little bit, so. So I like to run the sub about 7 dB hot and then turn it down later on so that you don't get any digital clipping. So right now it's right in the middle. Um, 75 is in the middle. I would want it to be outside of the range and we'll turn it down later on. So let's turn up the, the volume on this a little bit. Just so it's slightly outside of the green area. Slightly outside, okay, keep going. You wanna to go to the next main line? I wanna to go to like, uh, 82. 82? Okay, so you, you are hoping to get here, okay. Oh, oh, pretty close, keep going. Oh, way higher. 82 and a half, 82 is here. A little bit lower, oh, 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 it's right under 82. Here, I'll go up one, there we go. We're gonna calibrate anyway, we just wanted to run them a little bit hot. So it's an old trick so that you don't get digital clipping when you're playing at reference volume because if you set it to the recommended 75, it's definitely possible to clip the LFE channel. Okay. And, and then let's sub do sub two. two. Okay, go ahead. It's over there on the left. Yeah, I had to wake up. That's that auto. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you want to do all this, maybe just turn it on. Or right, just a little bit over green. Yeah, that last one looked good. Oh, Ooh. way high. Right, right, like hovering around there. That's like way higher yeah, than good. 82. Centered around there, that's good. Okay. Okay. So those look pretty good here. Now what we're gonna do is do the normal measurement. We only have to do one and I'll show you the trip. This is the thing that you're gonna need to do is uh, after the measurement, we're gonna exclude the measurements. So here we go. Oh, 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 that's sneaky, sneaky. So we got the mic set up there. Okay. Yeah. And so then measure. Position. Me measure position. Oh, I got to get out of the way. Home. So here we go. All right, so this is the key. The key is, see that exclude position? All we want is the distance and levels. We can use that. I think that that's reliable, but we don't want Odyssey to do any of the correction. I hit exclude, turns pink, and then, so you'll notice the trim and the distance are all pre-populated. Also wanna go into settings here, change a few things, enable precise trims, and enable headroom expansion. We'll just say okay. So the max is 40 on that one. We'll go all the way to 40, even though we probably won't even need to use that. And you keep the expansion limit on the headroom to 12 dB? Yeah. Okay. So the reason why we're excluding here is because we don't want Odyssey to do any of the correction. What it normally wants to do is it takes this and it wants to make it flat. We're gonna set all the curves directly into here. So you see by default it has this high theater, theater high frequency roll off, we don't want that. Mid-range compensation, I don't think so. And then what we'll do is we'll start to import. So if I just click on import EQ up in the upper right hand corner. Mm -hmm. One by one, so we have front left. Uh, so we're doing the left, import left, boom. 10 PEQ filters imported. Just like that. Yep. So we'll do the next one, which is the Whoa, right. Whoa, wait a second, wait a second. You mean all these things up here? Yeah, each one, of this is, each one of these is a filter of its own. And you can see down here, you can see down here on the, where it says front, that's oh. showing the filters that it's using. Mm -hmm. Cutoff mode, I'm gonna actually disable that. Don't warn me again. And that's it. So we're gonna do that for every single speaker. Import front right, choose front right. The import of 10 supported EQ items was successful, all right. Okay, so notice that the EQs for the left and right are slightly different. I mean, there's some similarities here, but in the bass, it's different. Mm -hmm, it's different Why? Yeah. Because one is near the corner, so it's probably getting too much bass. The other one is kind of in the middle of the room, which actually, it needs more bass. Mm -hmm. So that's why custom target curves for each individual speaker is important. Hmm. Yeah. Center channel. Ooh, look at the center channel. It, was, it had that big old dip. And the good thing about these particular speakers is we know for a fact that they have good directivity index, which means they are EQable. That's right. And if you haven't seen Joe's video on directivity index, I'll link it down in the description below. Oh, thank you, Chana. You got it, bro. Import. Surround right. Surround right. 
import EQ, uh, front height left, front height left. If we scroll over, you can see all of them here. I got to make sure to disable this. You got to disable all these cutoff modes? Mm -hmm. All right, because you don't want it to cut it off, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, keep, so that's the round left. Keep you on. What do we got? We got and play around. You may want to play around with disable auto leveling. See if it sounds better with it on or off. I'm going to keep it on for right now. Mm -hmm. So front left height. Okay. And then last but not least are your subwoofers here. Definitely. So it's by default, this is disabled. So on the LFE channel. Okay. Subwoofer select file LFE. Okay, so it's actually doing some cuts here. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next step, we go to the filters here. So this shows where it limits. I usually just turn all these off. I want it to, I want it to go all the way down to 20 hertz, but let's see. So auto 20, 20. They're all going to 20. I don't really trust that it's going to do it, so I manually put them to 20. So it means it's going to uh, apply the correction all the way down as low as I want it. Even though we're going to use a crossover, I still want a full range correction on these speakers. Okay. So if you happen to have full range towers, You're if you happen to want to run them in stereo with no subs, you want the entire correction frequency to range. Yeah. Yeah. You probably don't have to do this. I just do it because you like to case. do this. Okay. Just this is not case. necessary, ladies and gentlemen. Well, having to type it in manually, I think it when it's set to auto, I'm assuming it goes all the way down. But it's better to yeah, just do it manually. You know what so they you... say about assuming, right? They make an ass out of two people. Yeah. And then how far down do I want to set this EQ for the sub? Ooh, I don't know. I want to, what's the lowest? 10. There we go. Ten. All the way down to 10 hertz. Although we're not going to use all that. You, you can set it to 20 if you want a subsonic filter, but these subs are pretty beast. They can handle it. They can handle it, ladies and gentlemen. Calibration settings is the next section. Okay. So there you go. Bass management. We don't, it thinks that the speakers are large, the front ones. Mm -hmm. But let's set it to 40 for right now. Small, surround, small, 80 hertz. This all looks pretty reasonable. 40, 40, 40. We might want to mess with this later on, but for right now, this is good. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is to always, always set this to small, right? Because you want the option to be able to use it with a sub. If you set it to large, you can't change it back later. So you can always change it back if you set it to small. So that's it. Afterwards, we're just going to send this over. Okay, multi cue on, transfer. Okay. okay, keep, keep the, rest the rest off. So that just transferred it to the AVR. So we're going to set to preset one. Preset one. Oh, it's clicking. So right now you have a 5.1.2, so it went pretty quickly. Right, so if you have 916, it's going to take a little bit longer. It'll take longer, yeah. And then all the measuring takes mm -hmm. longer. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's done. Okay. So normally you just kind of assume that what it did was correct, right? You just hope that you did a good job, but we're going to actually check with the Magic Beans app. So let's go ahead and play the pink noise from the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit. And we're going to play it on the left speaker. I'm going to cross it over at 80 because what we want to see is, are the subwoofer levels matching our target curve? Okay. Right? So we are back. The Denon's back on. We are on the Blu-ray. And what are you going to do first? So I'm going to set the front speakers to 80 hertz. Because what we want to do is see if your subwoofer level is matching our target curve. Crossover, we've set to 40, which is what we're going to set it back to later. But for right now, just to make it easy for you guys to see, we're going to set it to 80. Okay. Watch, go play the Atmos thing. Let's see. Which one? Play uh, front left. I'll show you something you should always turn off. So when you go surround parameter, off. Loudness management, turn yeah. that off. But you have to have something playing first. Yeah. Holy crap! Are you that's, kidding me? That's why it was all low. That's why you can't do SPL properly. Like when you go to Oro, it's super loud. When it goes to Dolby Atmos, it's like low. So that needs to be off. There, you, why do you want compression on? No, we don't want compression. Yeah. So this is the proper way to set the levels. Wow. So now when you go to 20, now it actually sounds like 20, right? Yeah. It's loud. Damn. All right. Okay. All right. So right now we're going to go and check to see if we're hitting this target curve. We're playing out of the left speaker. With the subwoofer, we're going to hit RTA alignment. So the mic is where we had it set initially. Let me just be quiet for a second. And look, everything is aligning. Yeah, it's lined up pretty well. Yeah. Except for us talking, but the sub 
we crossed over at 80, so you can see it's following the target. That means our sub levels are good. If they're too low, this is what you get. You get something like this. Like if I turn down one of the subs, let's say, you see that it's oh, yeah, no longer it's dipped. it's dipped down there, yeah. It's no longer following the curve. So when it's following the curve, that means that your subwoofer is at the right level, so it's matching your target curve. Boom. Yeah. But look at our EQ correction made it so it follows our curve mm -hmm. like we want it, except for it's catching us talking. Yeah. Wow. The only thing to do is for you to listen. The only thing for me to do now is listen? That's it. What are we listening The to? next step is for you to listen, listen to the same demos. Maybe you'll do a binaural recording and play the same exact demos that we just did. Maybe play some music that you're used to. And uh, I just want to capture your real reaction. No right. fake YouTube. None of that. Oh, yeah. Just, just give me the real reaction. The real if deal. If it's whatever, it's whatever. But Okay, all right. Let's do it. Oh my god. Ah, oh, dude. Dude, I didn't have it on my face. Damn it, but it's okay. Uh, okay. First initial thoughts, like... Dude, the bass is much tighter than before. Oh, crap. Oh, I like this one, too. Let's hear this one. It's so clear. It's just so, it's crystal clear. goodness are you kidding me it's it is so like locked in together it was not like this before uh, oh, why don't you play some music that you know all right and we'll turn it off and then I'll... music sounds good right? yeah, yeah let's turn uh, it how do you know what thunder sounds like is that I, yeah yeah i don't know uh but that's gonna be copyright hit with copyright no so. just uh we don't have to play it you just get your reaction to it okay <laughs> Yes, yes. So you've heard expensive, expensive systems, right? Yes. You've been to these places where they have like uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Yeah. What do you think of your system compared to that right now? Uh, this shit rocks. That's really <laughs> like I, there's for the amount that I've paid for these speakers. I, I yes, the Denon 6700H. I uh, I got lucky on that. But these speakers, so. That was 118, 105, 118. Uh, this guy here gave me these two, but these are these are cheap. They're like 200 They're each or something like yeah. that. Uh, the subwoofers are expensive. Those are expensive, yeah. Like what is it, 1,200 for one? Yeah, I don't they're know. around that price range. And but the thing is, you had all the same equipment. All we did was we did calibration. Yeah, yeah, we just did the calibration, and it sounds so much better. And just going back and forth. From pure direct to the Oro 3D upmix is night and day difference. I would not want to listen to this on pure direct. Stereo's good. It's like pure direct plus. That's that's the best way to describe it. Pure direct plus, mm -hmm. right? It adds more in the midsection. Uh, the bass is a little bit better rounded off, right? And all we did was spend how how I mean we it, was, it, it took longer just because we had to film all of it. Yeah. The actual process. 
it doesn't take very long. You saw, like, if we were to just go 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Right, so right. It, it's not that long. Um, but actually, I want to sit there and hear the Amaze demo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. You do it. Yes, all right. So, yeah, definitely it cleaned up the bass. I do hear something rattling over here when the bass hits. Um, but it doesn't sound like you have subs. It sounds like you just have giant speakers. And that, and also the tonality of all the speakers, even though they're all slightly different, they sound more similar. So when the pan went around, it didn't sound like, oh, it's going from a, you know, to, from different speakers to another pair of different speakers. It just sounded like the sound itself was moving around. So I'm happy. It's like super cohesive. It's, it's together. Mm. It, it, there is, a, and especially since all these are essentially timbre matched, mm -hmm. right? Now we're in a level of immersion that, you know, it just, it just takes everything. Like when we're talking about like home theater, we're talking about dialing in and getting that extra 20%, that extra 30% out of your system. And when I already have all the speakers that are from the same manufacturer, mm -hmm. they're all timbre match, even these little guys up here, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot, I, I've had hodgepodge systems where it's like a different left speaker, different center speaker, mm -hmm. different high channels. Now that everything is together, and we've now created a custom target curve for the entire system and got the subs like playing nicely with it. Now we're on a whole nother level. And I can't explain to you like how insane this system sounds because the system we did this on first in my other home, the speakers alone were $10,000, right? They were sent to me. I didn't have to pay for them, so that was great two amplifiers that are probably like $8,000 for both of them running off of this Denon. And you know, I also had it on a Marantz and whatever, but damn. Oh, and that was two 15 inch rels that mm -hmm. we did it on. And this is a 10 and a 12 yeah. from Elac. So yeah. they're not even matching. <laughs> and the fact that this whole system is a fraction, a fraction of the price is the main key. Like you can get a stellar performance out of budget level equipment if you dial it in properly. And considering all these AVRs do is they put a target curve that is completely arbitrary to your room and your speaker's capabilities. And that's why I feel like this is the next generation. This is the disruptor. This is what you everybody else needs for their home theater. Thanks for that plug, first of all. I appreciate it. I'm really excited to get the app out to you guys. We're still doing some final testing. Wanna make sure that everything's working well, but it's very close right now. It's been a few days since Joe's been here and I wanna thank him so much for coming out and doing this. I gotta say, wow. I think that's really the, the only thing I can say. This system is awesome and the internet just got upgraded over here so I can actually stream some movies. So I am in full movie mode now, and it is amazing. Magic Beans is awesome. You guys gotta try it in your system. Now I do have some new binaural microphones and I can do some binaural re recordings. So if you guys would like videos on Magic Beans versus Odyssey, let me know in the comments if those are the kinds of videos you'd like to see. I think I can scramble up an AVR that has Dirac, so maybe we can do Dirac versus Magic Beans as well. You guys let me know in the comments. And again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much, Joe. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.